This is part two of atheists reacting to the pastor who frequently visits heaven. Previously on Holy Kool-Aid. There is a place, however, where you literally learn to fly. And it's in this amazing amusement park. She painted a picture. It looks like an amusement park in Chernobyl, like 50 years after the accident. You learn to fly like Superman. One of the really exciting things I found out is who teaches you. No. It would be Christopher Reeves. No! Now, when you learn to fly, there's a the amateur or beginner's area. Okay, but like, this is just the good place. There are places like the Mountains of Spices. There's no bald people in heaven. Isn't that awesome? I am Taylor. I run the Antibot on YouTube. It's all about taking a critical look at the multi-level marketing industry that preys on a lot of people throughout the world. My name is V. LaBianca. I am one of the hosts of the show Skeptic Generation, which airs every Sunday at 11.30 a.m. Central. And Kat Kerr, if you are ever in the mood to chat, please do give us a call. I'm Genetically Modified Skeptic. You can find me on YouTube at Genetically Modified Skeptic. You can also find me on Twitter and Facebook at GM Skeptic. Let me tell you, you've never had any pizza like they have in heaven. Pizza? And I was taken to a, a pizzeria. But it's not as good as New York pizza. You need that, uh, that Hudson River water. And let me tell you, the pizzas are the size of the tables. <laughs> I can see Kat Kerr like watching Cloudy with a chance of meatballs and there's just like giant pizzas falling from the sky and then she's like, uh, I just had a vision of heaven. The cultural influence of Italians is just so great. It's so great that it has reached heaven. God himself is trying to emulate the culture. And you and all your friends sit around them and they actually turn the table to get their slice of pizza. That's called a lazy Susan. I've been to a bakery in heaven where the cinnamon rolls are the size of a dinner plate. You're not gonna get chana masala, right? You're not, you're not gonna get some food that she's not familiar with, some food that she hasn't eaten. Like if, it, if this isn't like Southern white person food, then, then she's, you know, she didn't see that in heaven. Like, oh, no, no, you, you can't get masaman curry in, in heaven. That, that just doesn't happen. You can't get pulao or, or biryani. Like that's, no, like why, why would you have that in heaven? No, that, that, only pizza and cinnamon rolls. The aromas, you literally can see the aromas. And if you ever try to walk by one of those bakeries in heaven and think you're going to escape not going inside, you are wrong. That aroma will actually come and capture you and carry you inside the bakeries. What? <laughs> like in a cartoon, do you float over to it like Tom and Jerry sniffing a good pie? This, I mean, her brain sounds like a fun place to live. I just don't understand the specifics. Like there's pizza places and cinnamon rolls and heaven. Like if you're in heaven, you don't even, why would you need to eat? Let's talk about heaven. Where do I live? Oh God. Everyone gets their own mansion. So now she's doing it in a church. This isn't just her fantasy sitting in front of a camera talking to her two subscribers. She's continuing this fantasy and an entire congregation is turning up to see her. Everyone gets their own mansion. You don't have to share it with your brother or sister. No sharing in heaven. Did she just say she hopes to have her own one day, her own mansion? I'll have my own one day. As many shows as she goes on, you'd think that she would be like one of those super wealthy televangelists by now. She's doing it wrong. They showed me many different types of mansions because we're all different. Right. We're all unique. Again, good place. This is just the good place. Oh, poor lady. Do you think she watched the good place and was like, I'm in a, I have been transported into heaven and this is a personal vision to me. And we all like different things and God really does prepare the most amazing personalized mansion for you. I have seen some fantastic mansions that are built along the Crystal Sea. If you're an artist, you get your mansion, you get a studio fully furnished, and then he gives you a gallery. You show your beautiful artwork and you give it away to people. Isn't that awesome? So when you're in heaven, everyone just works for free. You give it away to people. There's no property. That sounds like socialism. It's funny because these people are so anti-communist and they, they grew up most of, you know, most of them are baby boomers, these pastors and prophets and televangelists, and they grew up during the Cold War. And so they're really, really, really heavily anti-communist. And I'm not a communist myself, but 
it almost strikes as a desperation move where they're just like desperately trying to paint everyone who disagrees with them as like evil communists. And then how she describes heaven is literally a straight up communist utopia. If you always wanted a horse, like I mentioned on one of my other um, reports, you probably have a hundred and everybody comes to your place to ride your amazing horses. They're never going to get sick. You're never going to have to clean them. Actually, you never have to clean yourself. That's why they call it heaven. <laughs> I'll tell you what my idea of heaven is. Never having to take a bath. Everyone here on earth has a praise gallery in heaven. And as you worship God, they also collect your worship and put it in your praise gallery so you can see your life lived for them. I've seen mansions built on islands in the middle of the Crystal Sea. I've seen some in this place they call the Valley of the Falls. I've seen this, uh, you ascend the Mountain of Spices. It talks about in the Song of Solomon, they really exist in heaven. And when you get there, you look down this huge, beautiful valley. And these mansions look like huge gemstones. And they're perched wow. all along the cliffs because you can't. <laughs> the other, the interviewer is just going, wow, <laughs> okay. You can't get hurt in heaven. And you have your own personal waterfall cascading near the mansion. Wow. I just like how the person that's listening is, is like, wow, wow, that's, that's so cool, cat. Yeah, you tell me more about this thing that's totally real. The sad thing is that everyone goes along with it and everyone like treats her like this wonderful, incredible prophet and like respects the hell out of her. And I don't get it, man. I don't get it. That's actually a clip from a show with a big, like, they're into it. A mega audience. They're into it. Jeez. And the thing about them is as you walk to the back of your mansion for something, it rotates. Imagine trying to get out of that house. <laughs> Wow. This huge whole mansion rotates, so no matter where you stop, you always have a view of the falls. I mean, you know how when you are having a dream and perspective gets all messed up? Like you're inside a room and then you walk a few feet and you're like in a completely different place. So you always have a view of the falls. Like what's on the other side? Is it just, oh my God, that's a view of hell back there. <laughs> that's, that's the window that you can like look down and be like, oh, grandma, <laughs> you're cooking. Some of the most fun ones I've seen, they call them sky mansions. And they're on columns 80 to 100 to 200 feet high up into the skies of heaven. I wonder what these sky mansions are built for to be above the torment of hell, to be away from the riffraff and the poor people of heaven. Like some people in heaven have these luxurious mansions and other people are like, ah, they're just living down below and they're stuck in the crystal sewer down there. And you step into the column in an opening doorway, you say what floor you want, it literally catches you up to that floor. Why are there elevators? Christopher Reeves is there to personally teach you how to fly. Is, is, okay, no, oh, I get it. The, the elevators, the columns, they're for the beginners who have not received the miraculous touch of Christopher Reeves. I got it. Yeah, no, no, that makes sense. That's on me. You can see all over heaven for miles. Maybe this is just me. I'm getting hung up on the concept of heaven as like with spatial dimensions. Like you can see for miles or the other side of heaven. It's like, is there like a capacity? You've got your own big deck. You've got Whoa. a landing pad with a little star cruiser that runs on light. Why a star cruiser? Is she like assuming that heaven is in space? And you have a, 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 a picture of that, a yes, sketch of I it do. in your I book. She has a book? Mm -hmm. Several. Or is it about her like journey to heaven? Yeah. Oh man. Your I book. sketched one and I thought mm -hmm. they were fantastic. I cannot believe how many people see this and genuinely buy into it and take everything that she says seriously. All right, well, that was fun. Part of me really would love to see the real life Jesus reacting to this 21st century middle America capitalist Western idea of what a great place is with amusement parks and giant pizzas and gemstone houses that follow you around <laughs> to the people who were actually promised heaven like it was like oh your kid all your kids won't die before you of starvation doesn't that sound awesome and it just apparently has changed i don't understand why she has so many specifics like does she think that if she puts so many specifics in there it'll be more believable to people like adding more details makes it seem like she really was there or something. Yeah. But yeah. it's like, I, how do people buy this? I just don't. 
I don't get it. It's like so specific. It's like nothing, there's nothing about this in the Bible, obviously. And how do we know that she really went there? Like, how is she, what's the evidence for that? There isn't any evidence. She's just saying a bunch of random stuff. This is an incredible racket. It's so easy if you're an imaginative person just to come up with a bunch of these things. And obviously there's, there are these networks in place where, where they will disseminate your ideas widely and people love i mean yeah it's like wonderful to hear about oh it's you know i'm gonna go to this great place in the sky where everything's gonna be fantastic but on on pure hope alone it seems like people believe this stuff which is incredibly dangerous right it gets you focused on this thing that is is pure fantasy rather than focusing on any issue you may need to solve here in real life we're so focused on going to this ridiculous heaven that we kind of stop caring about making earth livable but that's why i make these videos to counter it to talk about this stuff to you know show people just how prevalent this is especially if you live here in the south this isn't just a fringe thing there's a lot of evangelical pastors like this and while there are more moderate ones and there's everything in between if we don't showcase this stuff and we don't call it out then we end up with people like this influencing our political sphere because like this woman and many other evangelicals like her were very influential during the trump administration and they will be very influential in the coming elections as well so that's why we push back if you guys support my cause uh shining a light on this stuff spreading science curiosity and scientific skepticism you can support my show with a per video pledge on patreon.com slash holy kool-aid literally every buck that you pledge there helps it helps me to grow my show it helps me to cover my costs and to to pay my editor Hi. hopefully if it grows more i can hire a bigger team and you can also make a one-time donation on paypal thank you as always so much for your support and as always dare to be curious but don't drink the Kool-Aid.